Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the derivation for the mean or expected value of the hypergeometric probability mass function. Now, I have a, a couple of other videos where I have done this actually. I have derived both the mean and the variance for the hypergeometric distribution in a very elaborate manner from start to finish, putting in a lot of details. That video is about an hour long which I will put the link for in the description here for you in, in case you're interested in. And I also have another video where I actually show the derivation of the parameters, the parameter space for the hypergeometric distribution. And also a key relationship that I'll be using in this video today and uh, so please check those out in case you want more uh, detail beyond what i'm doing here in this video you'll find all other details that i'm not including in this video once you watch those other links so let's begin this what we want to do first by definition of expected value the expectation for a discrete random variable which is uh, um, variable x and for a discrete distribution which is hypergeometric is the expected value of the random variable is given by a simple relationship sigma x fx or some use px so whatever the probability function is i'm just going to go over all permissible values of x over the domain of the function so for the hypergeometric distribution therefore this is going to be x from zero to n remember n is the sample size here x times the probability distribu distribution function is uh, k choose x times n minus k over n minus x not over but I should say choose n minus x in the denominator we have all possible sample of size uh, little n chosen from a population of size capital N without replacement k here is the number of successes in the population x would be the corresponding success in the sample n minus k would be the, nu the number of failures in the population and little n minus x number of failures in the sample so what I'm going to do next I'm just going to bring out uh, 1 over cap n choose little n from the denominator in front of the summation and do x times i'm going to write that uh, k choose x as uh, k factorial over and then x would be x factorial and then k minus x factorial and of course, in the numerator, we have cap n minus k, little n minus uh, x, choose x. Okay, now the x that's in the in front of the fraction line and the x factorial here, one of the x's crosses out, gives you x minus 1 factorial, right? So one of the x's crosses out. And then uh, next, I'm going to write 1 over cap n choose little n now the summation here at this point we can write it as the sum of uh, the k factorial uh, I'm just gonna actually write this as because the x is divided out here so instead of x starting at 0 now we're actually gonna go x starting at 1 right because the x was divided out so this is gonna be from x1 to n now of k factorial over x minus 1 factorial times k minus x factorial and then of course times the latter part n minus k choose little n minus x all right now what we need to do next is we need to <clears throat> Let's simplify uh, this uh, fraction involving factorial. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to remember k factorial is k times k minus 1 factorial. So I'm going to bring the k out from the numerator. And doing so we just have uh, 
uh, k minus 1 factorial true and then here we have x minus 1 factorial and in the next factor k minus x factorial I'm going to write it as k minus 1 minus uh, x minus 1 factorial so we're doing a little bit of magic there okay and uh, what I just have in here is still k minus uh, x factorial but that what that will do is what it will enable me to rewrite this in um, a combination notation and remember the uh, limit of summation goes from one to little n so at this point we're gonna have k over uh, cap n choose little n and my summation I'm gonna write it as x from 1 to n of the whole fraction is going to be k minus 1 choose x minus 1 uh, in combination notation and uh, the latter factor of course uh, that's going to be there that's going to be oh this is got to be careful here that's n minus x and that's going to be n minus x okay so we have that now at this point i'm gonna let y be x minus one okay from which it means x is y plus one right so i'm gonna rewrite my summation now in this form and that's going to be k over and choose n and then the limits of summation now is going to go from y equals zero because remember x uh, minus 1 is y and if x is equal to 1 then x minus 1 is 0 so that means y is 0 okay so that's how I get my lower limit to be 0 and then the upper limit is actually going to go now because we start in y from 0 the upper limit is going to go to n minus 1 okay and using this new variable notation I'm going to have k minus 1 choose y and then n minus k it would be choose n minus y minus 1 here right because that's what x is x is plus y so the negative outside affects both y and 1 outside of x that is okay now at this point um, we have the new lower limit and the new upper limit of summation and here is where i actually put a link to uh what you call it to my other video that shows this relationship that i'm about to use the important the key relationship here uh, is the following it is well known that the sum as j goes from zero to let's say m of a choose j times b choose m minus j that's simply going to be a plus b choose m okay now so again in, in another video i have shown this very specifically in great details so uh, how does this relate to what we have in here okay well in here what we have is as follows um, <clears throat> a is equal to k minus 1 and j is equal to y okay that's basically right in here that's a and here is j okay so we have that and then b in here corresponds to n minus k okay so i'm going to write b is equal to n minus k and m little m uh, m minus j let's say okay the lower part of that combination m minus j would be n minus y minus one okay where m is n minus one all right and finally uh, a plus b this part corresponds to n minus k right uh, so a plus b can be written as k minus 1 plus n minus k 
or you can do individually here's a here's b combine them and that's how i get from these two i get this portion all right so let me get rid of all these extra marks so it reads better good and uh, this actually uh, reduces to n cap n minus one all right now replacing uh in here replacing the uh k minus uh, k minus one y n minus k n minus y minus one or not replacing but matching it against this well-known summation we're going to get the following i can write this as k over cap n choose little n and the whole summation is simply going to be n minus one choose little n minus one okay so it's very important to have this uh make a note of that key relationship that key summation now at this point um we just have to rewrite so let me skip a few lines go down here we just have to expand these uh the combinations so i'm gonna have k over uh, cap n choose little n well that's just gonna be uh, cap n factorial little n factorial and then cap n minus little n factorial times uh, the next combination is going to be n minus one factorial the lower part of that and then the numerator which is cap n minus one minus the lower part little n minus one factorial it and in the numerator of course we have n minus one factorial that's by definition of combinations okay next um, the complex fraction that you see here i'm gonna think of it as inverting and multiplying it so it's going to be k times the uh denominator actually moves to the numerator now right and n factorial that's in the denominator i'm going to write it as n times n minus one factorial and uh, times cap n minus little n factorial all of that divided by n factorial times and the fraction next to that it's going to become n minus one factorial simplify within the bracket we get n minus little n factorial cap n minus little n that is the numerator is cap n minus one factorial now we can actually simplify uh, some of these the factors those cross out the n minus one factorial n minus one that is little n minus one those cross out and what remains uh, is simply uh, k n in the numerator of the first fraction uh, times n minus one factorial the numerator of the second fraction we're multiplying those and in the denominator the cap n factorial i'm going to write it as n times n minus one factorial and of course these can uh, cross out as well right the n minus one factorials cross out and that will leave us with uh, simply that's equal to k little n over capital n and there you have it so that is going to be the mean if you will of random variable x or expected value of variable x it's k little n over cap n and there you have it that's what we wanted to do again i'm i'm going to put the link in the description or just above comments on this video on where this relationship comes from okay because without it we wouldn't be able to do this so so easily and i will also put a link to another video where i separately derive the variance of the hypergeometric distribution just don't want to make these videos too long for you uh, but uh, there you have it and uh, we are done with this work thank you